So just a few bits I've got to get out of the way in the intro bit of this video. I've got to say a big old thanks to my parents for my birthday present of the sick Bullet Club Blacksmith Apparel jerseys. I've got this in the United Empire, my birthday present, which is today. Love these. These are so cool, so comfy, and just look sick. That's number one. Number two. What's coming up? There's a lot of things coming up. I will have my review of Revolution up tomorrow. I will also have my thoughts on WWE 2K24 out on Tuesday when I've had a chance to play that for a bit. And my review right now of For the Love of Progress number two. <laughs> Hello and welcome to FTTR, I am Hugh McQuaid and today we are talking about For the Love of Progress 2, Chapter 164, the 164th installment of Progress Wrestling, that sounds a lot, but it's all fun, it's all fun, this is going to be my review of the show that took place on Friday at the BEC Arena in Manchester as part of For the Love of Wrestling convention which is going on as we speak, I have unfortunately not been able to make it this Sunday or this weekend, which is a shame because I loved it last year, but we can only do what we can do. Hey, hope everyone there is having a banging old time. Shall we dive into this review? We will, but before I do that, please subscribe, please like this video, please comment your thoughts down below on the show if you were there. I want to know all your thoughts and what you think of this show and the direction of Progress Wrestling, if you're a Progress Wrestling fan, and where they're going in this sort of new era, it's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be a very, very interesting one to discuss this show because there's some things I liked, some things I didn't like. This is probably a bit more of a mixed bag show for me than my other Progress shows. I think this is, I don't necessarily feel negative on this show. I feel pretty okay. I think it was a pretty solid show. However, my main critique from this comes from the sort of progression, if you will, of progress. Having a big show like Twisted Metal, I thought they were going to be pumping on all cylinders, give us some big angles, set up the new feuds going into the summer, going into Super Strong Style. And some of that was established, but I think overall just a few more steps needed to be taken, if that makes sense. So we'll start with the show overall. How was the presentation? This was my first time attending Progress or a wrestling show inside the BEC Arena. Usually it's in the Ritz at Manchester. I think it's a unique experience. I think it was a hot crowd. However, the, the scope of the venue that you are in, because it's not rammed full, I think could give the impression that it ne wasn't necessarily a hot crowd, which I disagree with. I think it was a hot crowd. I just don't think the sound travelled well in the BEC Arena, which is to be expected. It's a massive, massive venue, and it's not full of fans. So, yeah, sound-wise, I thought it was pretty good, pretty hot crowd, some good matches, some good matchups. starting with the opening match, which was Big Demo taking on Eddie Dennis. I really liked this. I thought this was really, really good. Really strong match. Started off funny, a bit of the banter between Big Demo and Eddie Dennis, having that sort of strong man face off obviously Eddie, Eddie Dennis is a big guy Big Damo is a big guy they were having that clash of styles and Damo demonstrating his strength doing sort of the tope over the top sent on and doing the big divide which is what we like to see and ultimately it was sort of about Eddie Dennis clawing back and becoming the Eddie Dennis of old you know he picked up the win here beating Big Damo really solid match and then cut a promo afterwards stating about how he's going to win super strong style 16 this year how he was robbed from him or he didn't advance because he wasn't worthy in the first super strong style tournament so that's sort of our one of the stories going in strong style is eddie dennis looking to be on this winning streak looking to be on this hot streak and probably i would imagine maybe eddie dennis gets to the finals we'll see from there we'll do a video on super strong style when i get to super strong style but there's a lot of predictions to have here, including sort of what's going to happen with that. We're quite a few months away, so we'll see where the story develops. Overall, I thought this match was really good, really effective. Maybe 
and this is just me, I think maybe a Demo heel turn would be nice at this point. I thought that was what was maybe being set up at the end of this match, but we didn't get that. I thought I thought a Demo heel turn here would have been quite effective and quite a unique challenge if maybe for Lycos down the road. But overall, this was a solid way to open the show. Next up, we got the match of Tate Mayfair's taking on Taishi Azawa. This was really fun as well. This went the way I expected it to, with Tate Mayfair's being the bastard heel that he is. You know, he said he wasn't going to cheat, he wasn't going to use the brass knocks, and he would work over the young lion of Azawa, keep working him over until Azawa eventually got the comeback, hit a load of strong strikes, hit a really nice step-up moonsault from the top rope, which looked beautiful, and then went for a Phoenix Splash as well, which was, if he'd have hit it, would have been perfect, but he didn't take Mayfair's roll out of the way. And Tate Mayfair's managed to pick up the win with multiple knee strikes, running knee strikes. I thought this was effective. I think building heels is crucial for progress right now. And Tate Mayfair seems to be on top of their list, setting him up for strong style, potentially a match again with Lycos. That's what I feel like is probably needed right now in progress. You need a big, strong heel now that Spike has been dethroned and you want a big heel going into a singles program with Kid Lycos for the belt because you don't want to Daniel Bryan the situation where he wins the belt and then you have him in a feud with Kane. You want a credible challenger. And I think Tate Mayfair is someone who can slip into that mould. Like I said, Damo turning heel I think would have fit into that mould. Either of the grizzled young veterans which we'll, get, which we'll get to in a moment. So yeah, I think setting up a big heel challenger for Lycos is important. This did it with Tate Mayfair. We'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. I thought this was a really solid match. I really like Azawa as well. Side note, he's really, really good. Really good in the ring. And yeah, this was fun. Fun match. Then we got a banger of a match. This was really, really good. This was Luke Jacobs taking on Miles Kamen. Miles Kamen, I know nothing about the guy, I'm afraid. I honestly, no clue. Other than what I saw in this match. And he's going in against one of the best British wrestlers in the world right now. Luke Jacobs, who makes everything fast-paced. I love the energy that Luke Jacobs brings to a match in that he has a sense of urgency with every single thing that he does, whether it be running the ropes, whether it be the lockups at the beginning. Everything he does is done with a sense of urgency and precision that isn't really seen in fresh wrestling. So this was a very, very, very fast-paced match, which I enjoyed. Lots of hard-hitting strikes, lots of beating the piss out of each other, lots of great near falls towards the end. I think Luke Jacobs made Kyle... Miles Cayman look really, really strong. This could have easily been sort of a seven minute match that Luke Jacobs not necessarily squashes but gets an easy win. But this went down to the wire, and I think both guys came out looking better. Miles Cayman himself, no, no slouch, he was really good in this match. There weren't many botches or anything like that. It was a really crisp, really well worked match with Luke Jacobs picking up the win after hitting really nasty clotheslines as he does. And then went to the back. Again, no sort of angle, no sort of story direction for Luke Jacobs at this point. I presume he will be in super strong style. But yeah, my continuing issue with this show is sort of not developing as many stories as I would like. The matches were all really, really good. And this was one of them. This was a bloody fantastic cracker of a match. But I just wanted a bit more story, a bit more feud building, if you will. And then we got the first, the last match of the second half, which I thought was going to be the main event, but it was not. It was Lycos Jim taking on the grizzled young veterans in what was a banger of a tag team match. I thought this was so, so good. I probably preferred this to the match that they had with Sunshine Machine at, in the Light of the Dragon. This was really, really cool, and it did play out sort of the way you would expect when you've got a new champ in a tag match in that Lycos 2 would get worked over for a lot of this match by the Grizzled Young Veterans and Lycos made the hot tag. However, the way Grizzled Young Veterans control the ring, isolate people and work that style is so, so good. Like James Drake running on the back of Zach Gibson to knock Lycos off always look really good. And then you've got them selling like a million bucks selling out of Lycos's offense. It was just great. It was a really, really good banger of a match. And it came down to the wire again. This was really, really close, really well fought with Kid Lycos picking up the win by doing a brain buster from while holding Kid Lycos onto 
James Drake for the one, two, three. Yeah, I th- agree. You want your champ to win. You really, really do. Grizzly Young Veterans, two losses so far since returning. They lost to Sunshine Machine and now they've lost here. Well, they're going to go on a story involving this? Is it going to be a losing streak thing? Are they going to go into singles programs? Obviously, they're doing work around the UK and around the world because they are a bloody hot commodity. And yeah, I thought this was really, really good. Really, really good. Really solid. Again, I just feel like we should have set up Lycos's feud. Lycos's story now at this point. Yes, it's like, it's nice to see him have the belt, but I want some story. It's all about how you follow on from that amazing, amazing moment. And I feel like we didn't really get that here. We got an amazing match with the Grizzled Young Vets, but we didn't get that follow on, which is what I was sort of clamoring for. The second half of the show started with the Progress Atlas Championship match as Ricky Knight Jr. took on Alex Hammerstone. I thought this was probably my favourite match of the night. I thought this was a banger, absolute banger of a match. I love Ricky Knight Jr. I think he's so good at selling and he's so good at getting his character across in the in like the egotistical like hard man I don't know how to describe it and I've never seen Alexander Hammerstone before and he's just a unit you see him in person he is an absolute tank and some of the moves that he was taking in this match were brutal like a huge suicide dive from Ricky Knight Jr. that knocked Alex Hammerstone right into the railing where I was a sitting and yeah they just continued to beat the piss out of each other and get near fall after near fall after near fall It was so, so, so good, and one of my favourite of Ricky Knight Jr.'s defences of this belt, I think. He's had some great ones. The match with Luke Jacobs is sensational. I don't know if this is my favourite. It was really, really good. Ricky Knight Jr. picked up the win and retained the championship. Obviously, Alex Hammerstone, TNA bound. He has signed with TNA. Very, very interesting. And I just want, again, I feel like I'm harping on this a lot. I just wanted more story. I wanted, I want to know what's going on with Ricky Knight Jr. Because Ricky Knight Jr. for me needs a story right now. He's had that belt for a long time. But it feels like he's not had a substantial story, a substantial feud since the Luke Jacobs match. So I really want like something. Something big of substance for Ricky Knight Jr. I want him to cut a promo. I want him to, you know find someone who can really get the best out of his character and his in-ring work and create magic because right now just sort of the one-off exhibition matches I think they're not necessarily running their course but I think I'm ready for more I'm ready for more from Ricky Knight and getting a really strong story out of this belt because it deserves it it really does deserve it I think near enough they're usually match of the night the Atlas Championship matches so I think we should get a really big feud with that whether it be heel demo whether it be luke jacobs again there's so much there bullet i think is a good candidate to go for the atlas championship i think there's a lot of stuff there that could be done with this and it's maybe maybe it's not being used to its full potential right now but the match itself was awesome next up we got a straight singles match as connor mills took on simon miller connor mills i really love this presentation of connor mills he looks so so cool and so so he works the heel like persona so well does Connor Mills and yeah the bleach blonde hair and the chain and everything I think he looks like a really easy to hate man no offense to him but yeah I really enjoyed this Simon Miller versus Connor Mills because I thought Simon Miller was going to pick up the win Simon Miller picked up the win over Rob Drake so I thought going into here maybe they're going to build some momentum for Simon but no if anything Connor Mills destroyed him for the most part, this wasn't really an evenly fought match. This was Connor Mills always working the leg and going after the leg of Simon Miller, constantly taking it out. Miller got a few nice moves in there, but it was ultimately Connor Mills who got the tap out victory over Simon Miller, which I thought was good. I think that's good. I don't think we should be like immediately pushing Simon to the main event scene because he is so beloved, but having this slow build works for me. It really, really does. And I can't wait to see what they do with strong style i think there's an interesting story to tell with simon miller he cut a promo after the match saying that he's going to be at strong style he's going to be involved with strong style whether that be in the tournament whether it be just having a one-off match there 
I don't know. But I'm very excited for it. I think there's a lot of potential in that story. I hope Connor Mills is in strong style. I think he's someone who could run the gauntlet and maybe even be a winner. He could be a good challenger for Lycos as well. So there's a lot of things you could do with strong style. And this match, while not like blow your socks off levels of good, was really, really fun. Then we got a tag team match of the Lana Austin experience. Rob Drake and Lana Austin taking on Gene Money and what was supposed to be Session Moth Martina, but she cannot make it because her plane's not here. Harley Hudson instead. This was fun. This was really, really fun. I enjoyed this. I think Gene Money is so charismatic and so funny that a lot of the spots in this match that shouldn't have worked really did. Like the karaoke segment in the beginning, the the, the middle, sorry. Like the just the the way Gene Money sells things and when he's on the apron and looking to make a hot tag to Harley Hudson. It all just works so well. And I'm here for it. I'm really here for it. I think they told a good story of sort of the dissension. Furthering that dissension between Rob Drake and Lana Austin. Rob Drake wanted her to take it seriously. Take the match more seriously when she's going to do a karaoke scene. I think that works really well. Furthers the Lana Austin experience that we're getting. Yeah. And Gene Money picked up the win. Picked up the win. Right decision. And there's not much more to say on this. I think... Everyone looked great in this. This was a highlight of my night. I thought it was so funny. So much, like, good humour. It really, really clicked and clicked with the fans as well. Yeah, this was a really, really fun mixed tag match for me. And then we got the main event as the Progress Women's Champion Rio took on Debbie Keitel. Kettle? Keitel. I'm going to say t- Keitel. This was... I hate to say it, and I hate to... I, but I want to be honest on these. This was a tad underwhelming i really like rio as champion i really liked debbie Keitel from what i saw i think she was got a really good heel persona and a really good look as well however i just think while the match itself was good it wasn't brilliant it didn't feel like it went too long it probably went about nine minutes nine ten minutes and it all just led to an angle an angle with Lana Austin coming out, trying to get involved, trying to do her karaoke, in which she gets kicked by Debbie, and then Riho hits the pile driver on Debbie for the win. Then Lana Austin comes down again to say that Rio's a bestie, and then Riho drops her as well. I thought this was a bit underwhelming especially because this doesn't seem to be the story that Rio's got going on at the moment it seems like she's quite involved with sort of the Lizzie Evo Kanji Nina Samuels stuff but we didn't get any of that we seemed to set a feud up again of Lana Austin which okay fine that's fine with me I don't have a problem with that I just don't think this was a main event worthy match or angle I'm afraid I hate I feel like that sounds really really mean But for me, I've got to be honest, and this just didn't hit the mark that I was looking for, unfortunately. And sometimes it is how you leave them. And this didn't leave me feeling that fulfilled, unfortunately. And yeah, it kind of put a little bit of a damper on the show. I love everyone involved. I love Lana Austin, love Rio, love Debbie Keitel. But for me, this was just not great. Just wasn't that great. And it capped off a show that I thought was pretty good. Pretty good. I'd say it's probably on the lower tier of sort of the progress wrestling shows that I've watched and seen. So I'd probably give this show a three out of five. Like it's not it's not awful. It's not terrible. It's not even bad. It's just good. And sometimes just good can be misconstrued as bad. But it's not bad. It's just good. So yeah, three out of five from me. I think I've got a lot of questions coming out. The next show looks incredible diamond dust that's where you've got leo rush versus kid lycos and you've got masato tanaka i believe is on the card as well sunshine machine there's a lot of cool stuff on the next show so i'm wondering if that whether this was a stop gap maybe who knows who knows but yeah really enjoyed this show three out of five i want to know what you guys think down in the comments below you were you a fan were you not was it your first progress show have you attended the convention let me know everything you want down in the comments below and i'll try and apply to every single one of them Thank you all ever so much for your support and have a nice day.